Snowboard Academy. Bring it home today on video cassette. Available from Columbia TriStar Home Video. Hi guys, welcome back to Movie Nights. I'm here with my good friend Kaylin Sacedo. Hi. Thank you for having me today. I'm so glad that you could fly out just for this. Just precisely for this and no other reason, although this is a very good reason. Just what is this though? I don't know if we really can answer that. How, how do you answer that? Do you remember the year 1998? Boy, do I. Do you remember just how big snowboarding was in 1998? Sure do. That, that was the year that snowboarding was introduced into the Olympics. <laughs> this movie really wanted you to know that. Uh, loafer boy, it's in the Olympics. It's new, it's happening, it's hot, it's fresh, you know? It's the fastest growing winter sport. This is uh, not an avalanche of fun. They promise that it is, but it really isn't. Or maybe it's just an outrageous avalanche of high velocity mayhem. Um, but they are, it is true when they say the path to higher education is all downhill. Oh boy, is it ever downhill! <laughs> I know you see Jim Varney here in the center. Um, I know that seems like he's really, really important. Very little of it is really Jim Varney being important. Well, I'm, I'm let me ask you this, like, <laughs> what part of the movie wasn't Jim Varney, though? If you had retitled this, like, um... Jim Varney farts into a camera <laughs> for 85 minutes? If you had retitled this, <laughs> Uh, Ernest snowboards to it's the hard. max, or something crazy like that. If you had said that this was an Ernest snowboarding movie, I would have believed it because that's what as well that's what they really wanted it to be, right? They wanted it to be a vehicle for Jim Varney. They wanted it to be Ernest, but maybe they couldn't get the rights to Ernest. Maybe? I feel like things just just went horribly awry. I don't think this is what they wanted to make. This is a major mistake. No, you're the mistake. Real quick, I'm just gonna summarize the movie. Right. What, what they say that this movie is anyway. Okay, so there is a ski school, and this guy that owns it, Joe Flaherty. Flaherty? Flahattery. And SCTV's Joe Flaherty. Canadian comedian. <laughs> you, who you might recognize as uh, the guy who constantly wants to make Happy Gilmore screw up his pudding in the movie Happy Gilmore. You suck, you jackass. Jackass. <laughs> this guy sucks. Is it a significantly better sports movie? <laughs> a sports movie that was actually a comedy? That's true. Why don't you shut the hell up? No. You're the mistake. So he owns this ski school, and he's got two sons, and one of them's Corey Haim, and one of them likes to ski. That doesn't give a shit about me. And the other one likes to snowboard. And skiers versus snowboarders. Uh, snowboarders are kind of like rapscallions. Do you remember how much people said that, like, skateboarders were the scum of the earth and they always felt like the man was always trying to oppress them. Um, that is basically the narrative of this film, where somebody's just got it out for those damn snowboarders. People just didn't like extreme sports because they didn't like fun, but we like fun, we so like obviously fun. we're gonna like these protagonists. <laughs> Those damn snowboarders again. They're making a mockery of this place and you're encouraging them. They're Chris and his snowboard goof-offs. The fundamental problem here is the snowboarders. They set up a, uh, a competition between the snowboarding school and the ski school. And if the snowboarding school can win, then they get to stay there. And uh, also, Brigitte Nielsen wants to steal the slopes from them, like she is the estranged wife of the owner. Oh, hello, husband. And she wants to sabotage them because if they have a safety violation, then they will lose their insurance and then lose the place. And she can get like half the money from the sale of of the stupid school, the, the stupid ski school. The bottom line is that she just wants money. <laughs> she wants to find a better accent. <laughs> Still carrying around those damn divorce papers? What a putz! This is a resort. 
I guess she's Russian because that's her character, right? Her character is be Russian. I've not seen that many Brigitte Nielsen movies. Um, she has a slight accent, but the one thing that you don't want to give her is another accent, yeah. because she she can barely act with her normal accent. Oh, it was but slipping she, constantly. <laughs> exactly, the pain and sacrifice, but I did come back, eh? Shut up and sit down. Oh, you drink my vodka. Double vodka. <laughs> I think our impressions were better than what was coming. I didn't know that's what she was doing at first. I was like, wait, does she sound like she knows less English well, than like, normal? But I did come back, eh? She just comes off as, no, I am called Russian woman. And that's <laughs> the that entirely... Really the impre I get nothing is the impression I get from her. Uh, so maybe your, <laughs> she, your impression's like, a little more accurate. All of her lines she delivers, like, the same. Every single one. Like, when she's being annoyed by Jim Varney's stand-up, she's just like, oh, get it over with. You suck. <laughs> Thank you, very witty. <laughs> I'm gonna take a short break right now, but I'll be right back. No hurry. Break's over. Get back up there. She didn't want him to do it, and then she's like, why, you busy not doing job? Get back on stage. But why? Who, does she run this place? I don't really understand, because she's been gone for ten years. It's really unclear what anyone's doing at any point, because <laughs> it, it makes it sound like there's a plot in this movie. There's there really, really not. Isn't. No, you, you just occasionally see people skiing and then snowboarding, woo, and then the slow-mo jump. <laughs> like or somebody does the splits as they're going down. A the mountain dew could fly into every <laughs> shot, and it would make sense. Too bad, Chris, I kind of like the idea of you winning in a parallel universe. Hey, I like parallel parking. You know, where they put all the little cars in there diagonally and... Brody? <laughs> all of this stuff essentially is in this movie, but really, it's like someone pitched this movie and then just focuses all on this tertiary character, played by Jim Varney. Right. Who is doing nothing of significance until the very end. Like, he's brought in as this bumbling guy, and they say that he is there to do PR, and he is there to be the safety instructor and, and the be an entertainer. Yeah, he's doing three different things. Mind you, he's not the only person to hold down multiple jobs. The lady who runs like the ski shop apparently also runs like the daycare nursery. Because I know it hasn't been easy lately. Well, with everybody having to do two jobs and all, well, not everybody. It doesn't make any sense why at any point he would even slightly consider not accepting in snowboarders into yeah. his mountain because it would make him more money. Why ever say no? It's weird too because it never feels like there's anything at stake here. Right. Because they begin by like the brothers argue for like two seconds. It's barely anything. It's the fastest growing winter sport. We're gonna allow snowboarding. And then like the brothers like, oh, we should only let in skiers and not snowboarders. Those they're a menace <laughs> because the the skiers are the paying customers. And the dad's like, all right, I guess we'll open up parts of the place for snowboarders. And they're like, all right. <laughs> and then they decide that they're gonna have this competition and prove that the snowboarders are here to stay. Checkmate. Check please. Check out those bibs. Do we take travelers' checks? No, we don't accept travelers' checks. Really not much of anything is going on. Like, they have the whole plot about trying to sabotage the competition because they want someone to get injured and lose the insurance. And then, like, they find out who it is because, like, the, the brother, the snotty brother, is like, why don't you ever believe me? I didn't do it. Believe me. Me, me, me. And they're like, wait a minute. Me. me. Why don't you believe me? Me, me. Me, me. Me, me. Me, me. me. And then the health, or the, not the health inspector, well, might as well. The been. insurance the insurance, guy. insurance inspector. He's like, oh, I saw the sabotage going on, you're fine. The end. Oh, wait a minute, we have proof. I know, I know, I saw evidence of the sabotage myself. Because they, they had to spend as much time as possible on Jim Varney doing absolutely the unfunniest things you've ever seen. He's falling down. He can't ski. He's knocking over everything in the shop. He's catching coffee in his hand. He's so funny. The person we hire is going to have to wear two hats. Hey, hey, I wear hats. 
I even brought a couple of hats. See? More than once, I was just saying fuck you because the <laughs> screen, like, it, it wouldn't end. The scenes just kept going. And I'm like, wait, this ski scene's gonna end, right? And then he's like, no, he's gotta go down the stairs now. <laughs> Ski In skis. Or, or even the comedy that wasn't about Jim Varney, right? It shows just how... Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows. Nobody knows the troubles I've seen. They have the, the, the lady with the accent who shows up and she's like, I'm looking for happiness. <sighs> Penis jokes! Can I help you? Yeah, I would like to go Mount uh, Penis. Oh, Mount Happiness. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's over there. You know what jokes we found out were cut from this movie? <laughs> jokes like a snowboard in the shape of a blunt did not make the cut of this movie. <laughs> a joke, though, is the thing. Yeah. Like, I mean, apparently, okay, I did some reading up on this, and this makes a lot more sense when you know this. There was a, a producer and writer on this film called Rudy Rupak? I'm gonna look this up, okay? I, wanna, I don't want to besmirch anyone with a similar name. Um, Rudy Rupak, yeah. So Rudy Rupak was 25 years old when he wrote and produced this, and that what meant that he was the youngest person in Canada to produce a movie at that time. And it, the idea of this was to make a movie and a video game. Oh man, the video game would have been like... <laughs> I feel like it wouldn't have been that hard to make a video game out of it because... This, look, this looks like crap that would have been on a Sega CD. Like, I don't think this looks any worse than anything around that time. Because at that time, it's 1998, um, the, the PlayStation 1 is out at that time, and there are, in fact, other snowboarding video games out at that time. You've got games what? like... What you've got Cool Boarders. Cool Boarders 1, 2, and 3 were out by this time. So... Imagine, imagine this, okay? You're, you're, you're snowboarding. We're watching a lot of slow motion snowboarding footage and shitty FMVs, right? And then... Jim Varney comes out in a big fart cloud and floats in and you gotta avoid him. You have to avoid him. You have and to play you know, as Jim Varney. And then Corey Haim comes up and he's like, he did the wrong thing, dude. Go back to the beginning. <laughs> and you're like, oh man. Mind you, Jim Varney, while stumbling around for 95% of the film, shows up at the 95th percentile point in the movie and is like, I have to stop the sabotage of this entire race. And I just caught this big old pack of dynamite and I threw it and I saved the slopes and now we can keep the insurance and we get to keep the mountain. Jim Varney saved the day, despite having done nothing of any significance at all whatsoever up until that point. I feel point. like he didn't even need to be there at that point, though, either. I no. mean, what happens after that? Like, uh, first of all, him catching it didn't stop the fact that the insurance guy saw this happening, so he'd be like, what the fuck, man? I'm like, all right. I guess, like, that lady's messed up. And then she, she runs off with some snowballs in her arms. Uh, excuse me, there's no snow in here. Miss, there's no snow in here. Huh? Whoa! Ma'am, there's no snow in here. There's no snow in here. And she's like, eh. And then they have like a ski stick fight. And then she starts trying to murder her. Just absolutely. <laughs> and, and was this worth it? She's got the audacity to be like, look what she started with me. Look what she, and the insurance guy's like, nah. So we, we already caught you, like, what are you, what are you even doing? My plan was sound! <laughs> She's teamed up with the former security guy and they, they try to hide his identity even though we know that it's him. <laughs> I don't know why they do this. I don't know why anything happens. Add macaroni to six cups of boiling salted water. Stir, boil rapidly, stirring occasionally six to eight minutes or until desired tenderness is reached. Roger. There's so many scenes of just stuff is just dragged out. Even when it's not Jim Varney, you've got the snowboarders who are being dicks just to be dicks, just because they think it's funny. They're huh. tired of these bougie skiers. I hate those bourgeois skiers. Ski school. We're gonna tag it so that it says skin school. Did they do that? I totally missed that one. Oh, just That's just terrible. the dumbest things. That's terrible. Just starting the dumbest fights. Oh, we're gonna take this dude's skis and we're just gonna snap him in half because we're just we're just assholes like that. <laughs> I, I can say this, you can totally tell that this was written by a 25 year old. But also, th there was some weird thing with this because Columbia TriStar 
home video. Wanted to to have the exclusive rights to um, put it on the video release worldwide, but they were transferring ownership at the time. So the bank that was loaning them the money to make this pulled out, and they were saved by this Quebec company. But they considered the script too edgy. Which is why they had to get rid of, like, the snowboard shaped like a blunt. <laughs> how, how was... <laughs> I can't believe that this would have been saved by any of the PG-13 <laughs> stuff in this. It was PG-13 to PG. And then, uh, after they uh, edited this, they brought in this other guy who plays the bartender in this, who just wanted a job at the time, and he had to add these jokes, and you could super tell, like, he didn't give a shit, yeah. he didn't know anything about comedy, <laughs> he just had to add in whatever to make this a funnier movie? I, I, I guess. Know. I don't know, because it wasn't a funny movie. What are you, a comedian? Apparently not. <laughs> This is what I can't get past. Like, why make the decision with all the other jokes you have in it? You're like, oh, but the, sno but the snowboard shaped like a blunt? Not gonna fly. We but can't have them smoking the weed. That's a bad example. Go ahead, ready to go one? This is head cheese. Head cheese? The Wikipedia page about this was great because apparently this was all because of something to do with Bob Dole. Like he was talking about <laughs> how like how like movies were like sh showing that people were like violent and like a bunch of like ruffians back then, and so they wanted to like be nicer in movies. I guess. What was so nice about this movie? Just dial, touch me, or rather, teach me on your lodge telephone. <laughs> it feels like they think their revenge of the nerds or something, or some sort of like frat gross out comedy at some points. But most of it is just Jim Varney's rejected earnest stand-up. My girlfriend is so fat, when we finish making love, she rolls over and smokes a ham. Hey, where are you folks from? Buffalo. Well, I had human parents. <laughs> Good evening, folks. Uh, don't you hate following Danny DeVito? Speaking of out of town, I just flew in from the coast, and boy, are my arms tired. I mean, what's with these airports? Hey, I bet you guys are having fun. <laughs> Buzz off, dickhead! I get the sensation that when this video hits the internet, it's going to sound like we're talking about, wow, a lot of things are happening in this movie, and I cannot stress to you how much nothing is actually happening. For as many words as we have said about, and then this lady is trying to stop this thing from happening. It sounds like we are describing a plot happening. It's really not. I don't know how to tell you without you actually seeing it for yourself that there's so much nothing happening all the time. Hey, don't let your mouth write checks that your butt can't catch. Okay. Just make sure your mouth can write checks that your butt can cash. And now, your butt can cash my checks anytime. Brilliant writing. You know, if you stare into the sun long enough, you can go completely blind. I, d I have questions about Jim Varney in this. Sure, I have sure. questions. I that don't... hair, for one thing. I don't, yeah, I thought it was a toupee at first, but it might just be very unflattering <laughs> hair. It could and be. It feels like he made a very conscious choice about his aesthetic in this that I don't quite understand. Yeah. I feel like they told him to improvise a lot. I feel, and be. then I, I feel like a lot of the other stuff hit the cutting room floor and they thought this was their best material. And the sad part is, I think they were right. I mean, Jim Varney caught on fire for a couple minutes. I was flailing around so much in this movie. Oh, falling out of, around on the ground in the snow and then like the snow plows coming along and he's just, ah! Uh, and he survived. And then he I survived, but, but it cuts away from him, and you don't see how he got out of it, but you assume he got, like, tire-treaded or something by the snowplow, but he's still alive. He's fine. He's fine, guys. Don't worry. If you were concerned that Jim Varney's character doesn't make it, spoilers, he does. But it would have been a funnier movie it if he had been. just died in a horrific fashion at the end, wouldn't it? <laughs> they didn't address, right? What? So they're talking... Everything. Say, when's the last time you conditioned your hair? My hair? 
So they're talking about doing this skiers versus snowboarders race, right? Mm -hmm. And the brother that wants to do the snowboarding, almost the entire movie, he says to this ski lady who runs the ski school, like, I'm gonna do a race one-on-one -on -one with you, and she's like, bring it on, don't write checks, your butt can't cash. <laughs> and then the two of them never face off. No. They never have their own race. You barely see the skiers versus the snowboarders. You just see snowboarders annoying people. Yeah. And Jim Horney falling. And then occasionally the plot will dip in. On your marks? <laughs> you know what? The race doesn't even matter by the end of it, quite frankly. The race doesn't even matter because then we find out that Russian lady's trying to sabotage the whole thing and then the insurance guy is like, your mountain is saved! And then what did the race matter? It's called race to draw. Deal. Deal. Yeah, they didn't need the whole plot about the schools or the races or anything. It should have just been like, they're pulling pranks on each other and doing snowboard things and maybe some character moments, which they never build on. They could have had Corey Haim doing Anything, for instance. <laughs> Dickweed? Jerk hole? They could have had a love story going on between I him thought that's and, what was gonna happen. and the lady at the shop, or the lady that he had the, the beef with, or whatever. No relationships. And then they realize that they have to team up because they're gonna lose the resort. The resort is saved totally on accident. Yeah. The, like, had Jim Varney not just casually kind of thumped his way on in, then they would have lost that resort. But the thing then, is, they should have lost this resort. Ah, oh, God! They were one violation away from losing their insurance and losing everything. And you see Jim Varney set himself on fire, like fall off of everything. You see people get hurt. He's going through the interview process. They take him up a ski lift and they hand him a walkie talkie like, here, here's how you're going to communicate. He immediately drops the walkie talkie and hits a skier on the head yeah. somewhere below him. And the guy's like, oh, I guess I... And would have expected you to not injure somebody Jackass. when you're the safety guy, and then he proceeds to hire him. Oh, skiing. Oh, yeah, well, that, sure, that's great. Uh, skiing. Uh, see, I thought you said scheming. Scheming is out. I'm not a schemer. And they had a line when uh, Jim Varney's being interviewed where uh, he finds out he's got to ski at the ski resort, and he's like, oh, what? <laughs> and he's like, skiing? I thought you said scheming, because I'm not a schemer. And I thought he was supposed to be like a bumbling con man. Yeah, like trying to play it off like, I'm totally not gonna rip off this ski resort because I don't know why he stumbled in there looking for a job in the first place. I don't know what job he thought he was gonna get. I don't know what credentials they thought he had to say, sure, he can be a PR person. And <laughs> What PRing did he do the entire movie? He used, the, he used the loudspeakers to sometimes sing into the, the, the microphone and, and people would just fall over just hearing Jim Varney's voice. Oh no, it's a guy who sounds like Ernest. <laughs> I rarely come across a movie, like a comedy movie, that makes you feel sadder by the end. Every single minute I felt like I was saying, why is that happening? I feel like Why didn't... is that happening? Why is that happening? I questioned absolutely everything I saw happening. It's all nonsense. And like, I don't think that they earned the 2.5 that they got <laughs> on IMDb. I feel like that's, that's unearned. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because that suggests that this is like a very neutral, kind of harmless, like, no. This is not a harmless movie. This is People were harmed <laughs> in the viewing of this movie. It's a solid zero out of ten, is, is what I'm saying. Remember, alcohol never solved anything. They don't behave like normal people at all. And I realize in a comedy, like, sometimes you do weird extreme things that are not the way people normally act, but this is like every single person did not feel like a, a normal human being. You have to have some basis, either in the world that they've set up or in the real world or whatever. And this comedy is just random things like, why would somebody do that? Yeah. And yeah. everyone acts like that. It's not like there's like one character that maybe is just off and maybe that's the joke, like they just act kind of crazy. No one seems to have any basis in reality whatsoever. Why you hit me with a large snowball? Yeah, and you spewed pseudo powder all over me and my dick, bro. Where were you during Bastille Day? 
Why is Loom Service so horrible? The skiers are pushed way to the extreme of hoity-toity, but then the snowboarders are also pushed way to the extreme of just being assholes for no good yeah, reason. Yeah, like they're not sympathetic. It's not like we feel like they're unfairly being kept off of this this school. That's very or true. Like, I mean, they just act like jackasses, so why would they, you want them to be there? No. You're the mistake. You could totally remove Jim Varney from the story. It would be exactly the same. I almost want to edit this movie and completely remove Jim Varney. It would Jim be Varney. five Varney? minutes long. <laughs> Good. It would be a significantly better film. Help. I've fallen and I can't get up. This movie has, like, a few talented people in it that sure. we've seen in genuinely great movies yeah. at their absolute worst because they don't have any editing, they don't have any direction, they don't have a good script. They're not given anything to work with. For real. Like, they don't have good material to begin with, but really they're just sort of coasting. It's a paycheck movie. <laughs> it is. Except Jim Var- I don't know, Jim Varney might have thought he had some good stuff. Something tells me this is a bad sign. I feel like Jim Varney was saved by the editing and the good movies he's been in, because maybe this is just this is just what he does. Yeah, I mean, this was just to keep him moving, give him yet another paycheck, and he could have gone about his life uh, with people forgetting that this movie existed, and, and like, I don't, I've never heard a single human being talk about this movie <laughs> in my entire lifetime, and so his, his image from to to this day is fine without people thinking he was ever in this movie. Well, this Sorry, one... we've just told everyone he's in this movie. But <laughs> does anyone think this is tarnishing Ernest's image? No. Does anyone think like this? Is... No one's like, oh yeah, I remember Corey Haim from Snowboard Academy. <laughs> oh yeah, you remember Br Brigitte Nielsen's great take as a villain in Snowboard Academy. Remember the jackass guy from Happy Gilmore <laughs> in Snowboard Academy? Why don't you shut the hell up? I feel like. <laughs> Jim Vardy, all we have to do is, like, go in and edit in his Ernest hat, and this would be an Ernest movie. <laughs> Why is this not just an Ernest movie? I'm telling you, they just couldn't get the rights to Ernest. Ernest kills comedy. Starring Jim Varney, star of the highly successful Burn Films. Burn Films. Burn Films. If it wasn't about literally everybody else that's in this movie, maybe it would have just been an Ernest movie, but it's not, and that's the problem. It was all sound and fury signifying nothing. <laughs> I mean, was it even worth a rental back then? I don't think it was. I don't know I, if I ever even saw it on shelves when I was going through stores at about that age, you know? I, I, I don't remember, remember seeing it on the shelf, and I never rented it. <laughs> I never rented it. But I now, saw it. I spent a good $2.22 to buy this film. So was it worth it? Was it was it worth my soul? I mean, <laughs> will I ever get back these minutes of my life? It's so short, you know? Life is so short to be spending watching Snowboard Academy. <laughs> and again, I feel like there was never an academy there. Like, they had like five snowboarders that they were trying to... Like, no, no, they had like four snowboarders and one guy they were trying to teach how to snowboard. And they had like a wooden... Oh, the guy that they made do that bad accent? What he said? Nobody really knows. Yes, that bad generic Asian accent. Was and that supposed to be a joke too? Like, haha, <laughs> funny because accent. But I did come back, eh? I, I just feel like they didn't actually have an academy. They had a wooden sign that they spray painted and said, school here, basically, with a lot more words than that. But like, we're teaching snowboarding here. And then did they really? They were just like, right, let's push this guy down a hill. There was really no schooling. No, happening. Horribly irresponsible individuals. They were gonna yeah. get someone killed at some point. Oh yeah, we watch them go like flying over a mountain. We're just <laughs> both kind of like, and they killed a man. And dead. Much like they killed comedy several times. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I don't know how much else I can say about this movie. This was such a non-movie. I cannot stress enough how much of not a movie this is. It feels like a bunch of YouTube clips that somebody compiled into an hour it was, and... It was a tax break, is what it was. An hour and 20... So, well, however long 88 minutes is. Hour 28. Yeah, 28. 
<laughs> I can't math. You can't math after this. No, I can't. They killed all the remaining brain cells that we had. <laughs> So, uh, uh, Caitlin, do you have any uh, closing thoughts on this? Would you recommend this to anyone? No. <laughs> My cat wouldn't recommend it either. <laughs> she was horribly depressed watching this. She's like, you know, you could be feeding me right now. You could be petting me. The choice of movies that we had for this, it was between this and and what was the name? Aspen Extreme was yeah, the other movie? Yeah, another snow of like skiing, mountain resort movie. Was that another Canadian film? I feel like it was. Uh, was it? Uh, I mean, it's supposed to not take place in Canada. It but... starred the guy from Due South, so I was thinking it was Canadian. That makes sense, I understand. And it, I was like, this is the better choice because it'll be funnier. It had, yeah, <laughs> but the other like... movie had lower ratings than this. Now the other movie was super serious and then this one, it's thinks it's so funny and it has better ratings and maybe it tricked people because it's not taking itself too seriously, but I do think it's a trick. <laughs> it is a trick. Don't fall for it. I feel that one look came off more like a dramedy. Yeah. Like yeah. a drama with some shades of humor in it. But I feel like this is probably the more depressing movie. <laughs> easily, easily. The other one's probably slower, takes a little bit to get into. This I've, this was a mistake. I've never seen Aspen Extreme, but I think I can safely say Watch Aspen Extreme and, and not Snowboard Academy, please. <laughs> Sight unseen, please I would save recommend. Yourself some time. <laughs> I would recommend Aspen Extreme over this. That's what I'm gonna end it on. <laughs> Do not watch. <laughs> Thumbs down. <laughs> <laughs> someone loses an eye but hey when someone loses an eye around here the party's just beginning uh -huh.